Jeremy Corbyn's time as Labour Party leader was fraught with claims of anti-Semitism which split the party today. Keir Starmer wants to show the arguments are over. Joined now by Labour MP for the Barking Day, Margaret Hodge, one of those worst affected by the rise. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Um, your leader will say later on today in a speech that the party has changed. What proof is that? Well, let's just take the anti-Semitism first, that uh, one of the first phone calls that Keir Starmer made after he became elected leader was to me and to other Jews who had suffered under the time of, of uh, Jew hate with Corbyn. And he promised us then that he would show, demonstrate zero tolerance to anti-Semitism. And he's acted. So we've got a completely new complaints mechanism. We, it's much speedier. It's much more countable and transparency, transparent. People have been expelled from the Labour Party in their hundreds. And uh, we've had intensive training of Labour Party members and decision makers to ensure that uh, uh, they are totally aware of what constitutes anti-Semitism. That's one bit, but the party's changed much more fundamentally. If you think about things like our attitude in the economy to businesses, the way that we approach business, that's a complete transformation from the days of Corbyn. Or if you think about us on the global stage that you're looking at now, uh, we are now firmly uh, working with NATO and with the West to ensure uh, stability for our values in the, in the global world. All that is a massive transformational change. It's not superficial. Yeah, but if he was so appalled by the way the party was behaving under uh, Jeremy Corbyn, why, why didn't he stop it at the time? He was part of the Cabinet. I think that time was horribly difficult, putting myself back into it. People had to take personal decisions as, how, as to how they were going to respond to the appalling circumstances yeah, in which we found ourselves. Anti-Semitism is wrong, isn't it? And, you know, it, it, he, you have to stand up and be counted as a politician. And he was part of that cabinet and he let it go on. Well, let me just say this, that some members felt so terrible about it, they left. I was among those, that, those people that decided to fight it from within. And uh, Keir decided to fight it privately. And I think those were really, really, really difficult decisions to take at the time. But what I can say to you is Keir's leadership since he became elected as leader of the Labour Party, you just can't quarrel with it. If you'd said to me, Kay, two years ago, when we had that terrible report, horrific day with the EHRC saying that we were guilty of Jew hate, if you'd said to me, two years on things will be different and you'll be given a clean bill of health, I wouldn't have believed you. So I'm proud to say that I was wrong. I lived through the 80s when we were fighting militant and it took much, much longer then. And I think the reason we'd be unable to manage it much more quickly now is actually that clear, determined, detailed, sort of absolutely driven leadership that we've had from uh, Keir Starmer. Yeah, since he took over, apparently it's reported there have been 700 anti-Semitism cases. Has the problem really gone away? No, and I'll tell you why it won't have totally gone away. If you allow something like that anti-Jew hate to move from the fringes of your party into the mainstream, um, it takes time to transform the culture. We've put everything in place. It's a zillion times better. We're beginning to see uh, things emerging. You know, I talk about flowers blooming, so Barnet, which was an area with a very strong population, voted Labour in the local elections. We're beginning to get stunningly strong Labour people, uh, Jewish people standing as Labour candidates. But is it all dealt with? No, we've got to keep our foot on the accelerator and transforming that culture to, show, to be restored to the party that I joined because I am a Jew and because I fight racism, to restore it to those values, its basic values, will always take time. It was a dark chapter in the party's history. Will it always be marred by that? I think we'll get... No, I don't think it will be. I think people now are so focused on providing uh, an alternative uh, party and, gov and, uh, and government that will provide hope, that you know, will ensure that we're not corrupt, which is uh, the, uh, the, the things that we're facing now that really will invest in health and education and deal with the cost of living crisis. I think, I think it, will, um, it will diminish. But let me just say this. I don't want us to forget it completely mm. because I don't want it ever to happen again.
Here's a tricky one for the end. Um, <laughs> what should happen to Jeremy Corbyn? Oh, I've absolutely no doubt about that. I think uh, I have absolute can't think of any circumstance in which Jeremy Corbyn could ever stand as a Labour candidate again. Still a member of the party, isn't he? Uh, he's still a member of the party. I'm Should actually, he be allowed to be? Um, uh, well, I think the most important thing is that he will not stand as a candidate. It's a, it's, it's a matter of his own doing. He's been the master of his own destiny. He knew what he did. Uh, uh, he but knows what he feels. You, would he be banned from the party? Well, I think the party's moved on, actually, ironically. I think I've moved on, the party's moved on, the country's moved on, they're now voting for us again. And if you're somebody who, believe, who promotes anti-Jew hate, if you're somebody who thinks that uh, we shouldn't be talking to business... Should you if be you're to part, be a member of the Labour if Party? Your party, if you're somebody who is anti nati I think you should be walking away from the Labour Party. Yes, it's not your party. Should he be banned from the party? Why, why are you In being the, so hesitant? Given... Well, I'm not being hesitant. I just think at the moment... You know, it's a matter for him. He's got to buy into the new gender. I don't think he does. I don't think he'll feel comfortable there. I think there's no circumstances in which he will be uh, uh, a candidate again for the Labour Party. We'll have lots of stunning people who will want to take over that seat. Uh, and it, then it's up to him. Can he be loyal to this transformed party, this fundamental changed party that is now uh, standing, you know, to be the government in Britain? OK. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you.